So if your arteries are clogged up and you've got poor vascular supply to the brain in any region of the brain, your brain will suffer. So get cardiovascular health in order. Now, with those two modulatory elements set forth so that we're all aware that they're there and they are vitally important, now I'd like to turn to the elements that have been shown to be vitally important for directly controlling, for mediating neuron function. Neurons, of course, are nerve cells in the brain, and there are other cell types too, of course, that will impact brain function, the most prominent of which are the so-called glia. Glia means glue, but even though for a long time people thought that these cells were just kind of holding things together passively, the glia play a very active role in the metabolism of neurons, in brain function, and probably also in cognition, in thinking, and so forth. So what are the things that directly impact brain health? And what are the foods that we can eat that will support brain health? Generally, when we think about neuron function and brain function, we default to a discussion about fuel. The fact that neurons use glucose, which is blood sugar, and that they require a lot of it. Uh, in some cases, they'll use ketones, which we will talk about a little bit later, especially in people that are following a low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet. But before we can even consider the fuels that neurons use in order to function, we have to talk about the elements that actually allow those neurons to be there and to stay healthy, what actually makes up those neurons. And that brings us to what I would argue is the most important food element for brain function, and that is fat. And that might come as a surprise, but unless one considers the water content of the brain, which is very high, a lot of our brain and a lot of the integrity of the nerve cells, the so-called neurons in our brain and the other types of cells comes from fat. And that's because nerve cells and other cells in the brain have a external layer. It's uh, what's sometimes called a double layered membrane. It's essentially two thin layers that serve as a boundary between those cells. And that boundary is very important because how things pass across that boundary actually regulates the electrical activity of neurons, which is the way that neurons fire and communicate and keep you thinking and acting and doing all the good things that those neurons allow us to do. And those membranes are made up of fats, but they're not made up of the fats that are around our belly, around the other organs of our body. They're not made up of storage fat. They are made up of structural fat and maintaining the so-called integrity of that structural fat, meaning the health of those neurons is going to come in large part from the foods that we eat. This needs to be underscored. What I'm saying is that the foods that we eat actually provide the structural basis, the building blocks of the very neurons that allow us to think over time. 